Hello, fellow golfers, and welcome to another episode of Senior to Scratch. Today is a beautiful day, and it's going to be a great weekend here in Calgary, Canada. It's probably pushing into the 60s Fahrenheit this weekend, and compared to zero Fahrenheit or minus 18 a couple of weeks ago, I cannot complain. Still no golfing in the immediate future, as we are expecting another blast of snow next week. On the bright side, that gives me a lot more time to prepare mentally and physically for the upcoming golf season. So last week's podcast, episode two, was based on food. This week will be similar in nature, but talking about supplements. Now, as I said before, I am not a medical doctor. I do not play one on TV. So please consult with a doctor before taking any additional supplements. This is a plan that works for me, and I'm going to go through the different criteria and reasons why I have selected these particular supplements. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. So the common theme I would say when I looked at all of these supplements that I take is really heart health and cognitive improvements that they provide. And both of these are important as we age. And another thing I will say, I'm always evaluating potential risk versus potential benefit with any of these supplements. If they are low risk and there's not much uh, in terms of side effects, I don't see the harm in taking many of them. So the first thing I will mention is to pay for an excellent quality multivitamin not something that's just going to go in your mouth and through your digestive system for an expensive ride. What I use is Thorn 2 a day, of which I only take one per day because it's such a high quality vitamin. It contains a laundry list of various essential vitamins and nutrients that I feel we need uh, to supplement our diets. Now I'll get into some specific supplements. First, I want to talk about vitamin D which is essential for bone health, especially as we age, and supporting heart and immune health, as well as being a mood regulator, which is important for us hot-headed golfers. Now in Canada, where I live, we are apparently all deficient in vitamin D. In fact, the government doesn't even test for it anymore, as they see it as widespread, and the recommendation is just to take some supplements. The angle of the sun here isn't high enough most of the year to get vitamin D. So obviously consult your doctor. But what I do is in addition to what is present in that thorn multivitamin that I take, I do take another 2,000 units of vitamin D. But this vitamin D comes with the K supplement. The vitamin K and vitamin D work hand in hand in calcium distribution, which is especially important as we age. Next, let's talk about iron. I take small doses of iron occasionally throughout the week, largely because of my limited meat diet and some hereditary factors. Iron is needed for my energy in terms of the hemoglobin aspect, as well as immune system health and enhancing vitamin C absorption. I make sure that when I do get blood tests, that my iron-relevant blood tests stay within range. It is vitally important to recognize that too much iron can be toxic, so definitely consult with a doctor and make sure you're getting the relevant blood tests. Okay, moving on to another vitamin, vitamin C, which is an antioxidant blood pressure regulator. It also helps with iron absorption, so iron and vitamin C go hand in hand. It's necessary for heart health and cognitive function as well. Omega-3 fish oils are very important for my supplementation as they are essential for brain function, exercise performance, and anti-inflammatory effects. And from my previous podcast, you'll know that I have suffered from inflammation throughout my body. Next, a high-quality magnesium source that comes in different forms. I specifically use Meg Enhance. Now, magnesium is very important in hundreds of biochemical reactions in your body. It enhances exercise performance, which again is especially important for older adults. It's important for mood regulation and also heart health. 
Now, moving on to protein, I mentioned this in my previous podcast episode, but muscle is one of the most important factors in aging, and protein is important for muscle development. So before I work out, I'll take hemp protein powder, which which is about 20 grams a serving. After seeing the naturopath and discovering potential sensitivities to dairy or whey, as well as pea protein, hemp protein was my next best option. It is a little bit more expensive than the others, but it tends to agree with me. Also related to muscle development and my workout regime, I take creatine prior to workouts. Reading studies, creatine may also help with cognitive behavior. This will require a little bit more research, but this could be really a double benefit for body and mind. So I think creatine will become an increasing part of my supplementation as I do more research. Now I'm about to get into some of the more alternative supplementations. So take it with a grain of salt and obviously do your research. But like I said, I look for things that I believe are low risk for uh, substantial potential benefits. The first thing is turmeric curcumin. Now, turmeric is a millennia old spice that has many potential benefits like anti-inflammatory effects, brain and heart health once again, arthritis relief, and potential Alzheimer's protection. The next supplement I'll talk about is really not very well known out there, and it's been the subject of longevity studies. Now, as you might imagine, humans live a long time, so to design a proper double-blind placebo-controlled trial for humans would take decades and decades, and it would be virtually impossible to control the conditions enough. So there has been a lot of testing on mice, which share a lot of the similar DNA as humans. So once again, it's a matter of evaluating potential risks versus missing out on potential benefits. Now, the the supplement I would like to talk about is called nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. Now, NMN is uh, like a special ingredient that our bodies use to make a very important molecule called NAD+. Now, NAD+, you can think of that as the fuel that helps our cells produce energy. As we get older, it's been shown that our bodies don't make as much NAD+. And this can make us feel tired and affect how well our cells work in general. NMN comes into play because it helps our bodies make more NAD+. It's, it's like giving a boost to a car that's running low on gas. And by taking NMN, we might be able to increase our levels of NAD plus and help our cells work better as we age. This could mean more energy and healthier cells in our older years. There are other supplements that I take to assist with the molecular changes that may occur with NMN consumption, but uh, I would refer you to the tons of research by experts such as Dr. David Sinclair, who's a renowned longevity expert. The last thing I will mention, and I did uh, touch on this in my previous podcast, is gut health. This may be one of the most important factors and least well understood to our health. The wrong makeup can negatively impact immunity to disease, inflammation, even brain function, and age-related brain diseases like Alzheimer's or dementia. With my IBD issues, I take a glutamine supplement that can potentially help with leaky gut. More research is needed on this, but I believe it's a low-risk supplement. I also take an occasional high-quality probiotic. It seems like every company is selling probiotics, so I urge you to do your research. My caution would be to say that you get what you pay for, so you don't want to take a probiotic just to have it pass through your system. So quality considerations are very important with probiotics. I also occasionally take Ackermansia, which is a type of bacteria that lives in the mucus layer of the gut. So the theory is that taking this supplement could help with fixing leaky gut. The other thing I do to help my friendly gut bacteria is drinking a a water solution with non-digestible psyllium husk fiber. I try to do this every morning with a warm glass of water so it helps hydrate as well as not increasing the insulin response because it is a non-digestible carbohydrate so it 
does not impact my fasting time. And then when I get to work, I'll have a cup of green tea, and green tea has many uh, medicinal benefits. So I don't really drink my first cup of coffee until at least two hours after I wake up. And I believe this is important as well based on some of the other studies that I've read. Well, that's about all I have to talk about supplementation. So if you found this information useful, please follow the podcast and check out my social media links. I promise that this golf podcast will eventually talk about golf. But I believe that building a solid physical and mental foundation is probably the most important part once you've reached a certain level of ball striking ability. Our next episode, we'll talk about the fitness component. So we will see you next time on Senior to Scratch.